Jamaica is at a changing and a pivotal point in its economic growth. I really do feel stuck and we certainly need to start seeing some level of growth. We can't go much further from our present cash flow, so we really need investors to bring Jamaican products to the world. Helping our SME and corporate clients to raise capital to take their businesses to the next level is a serious focus of our investment banking business line. We are up to the ceiling with goods. I definitely want to win this competition so that I can take my family business to the next level. This is one of the businesses that we think we can scale very well, uh, very quickly, and keep the costs under control. Capital Quest is true to life. It's a journey of entrepreneurs that are at a stage where they've developed good businesses and they're ready and willing to take their business to the next level. It's very important that we quickly increase our, our scope. If we don't address the demand that is there, someone else will have to come in and fill those demands. There are things that we need to do to increase our production output. So we would need some capital to get all of this completed. The day before we actually started production, we got another order for 50 cases of jerk season. We have big dreams and vision and we know we can do it and we'll get to the next level that we want to get. We would have put the entrepreneurs through a business boot camp where they were exposed to many things that they may not have been exposed to before. So what, what do you do when you are assembling a board? Um, first of all, you need to find the right people. Now, who is a company? You the and team. the team. So business owners who try to create core values without involving the team, you will never get the team to adhere to those core values. Finally, this is a high stakes competition for an equity investment of up to $50 million. I have to win this um, invest, um, this investor pitch and therefore there is no stopping in getting that. So whatever it takes, I'm going to have to do some homework and ensure that I come out on top. We, we look at the, their business and we see ours and ours uh, is the only one I think that has a global potential. So it would make sense for an investor to invest in a business such as ours. I think we have a unique selling position. I'm not afraid of the competition. I think we're going to get there to the finals. This has been washed already, mm -hmm. and they're trimming it up, yes. uh, and then they're going to dip it in the, in the fungicide. fungicide. My name is Rita Hilton, and I'm the owner of Carita Jamaica Limited. This is an export, 100% export company. We export fresh produce to the United States, Canada, and the UK. The warehouse can handle up to uh, 20,000 pounds of yam a day. And how many people? Do you we have about 20, 25. Okay. We can't go much further from our present cash flow. So we really need investors to feel a part of our company that they want to invest to bring Jamaican products to the world. That's a perfect, yeah. So where is this Callaloo produced? In, in St. Elizabeth? Right here in St. Elizabeth. Right here in St. Elizabeth. Right here. My name is Denise Palmer, founder and CEO of Southside Distributors Limited. And this is, this is an order you have yes, for have somebody? Yes, I have an order for an entire container. A container? Yes, a container yes. that's 1,250 okay. cases. We, we have gone ahead and got um, the energy audit. And the energy audit. That's one um, of the things you yes, want to we use want, the yes, we want to use investment, investment for. for. The name Southside was born out of the fact that we're in southeastern St. Elizabeth. This mm -hmm. is where we pro do all the processing as it relates to the canning of of Aki's cooking of jerk seasoning. I started a company in 2006 with one stove and a pot and one employee. This is our warehouse and this is what some of our finished products look like or can Okay. Aki's. I personally have a vision for Southside distributors and I would like to take it to the next level. And well this one is in, in, in French. My name is Lisanne Chai and I am one of the owners and the general manager of the Stationery Centre. My dad taught me everything about this business, mm -hmm. even how to pack a shelf. He taught me how to tie goods so that the goods won't tumble over and how to be efficient in terms of space. 
Not only do we sell quality products, but we offer a superior customer service. We are just on top of one another and it is not very easy for the customers to see the items that we have to sell. Mm -hmm. And we're all about getting more of the customer's wallet. As Absolutely. you had told me before, <laughs> we need to expand. Again, we have just outgrown our space. My name is Henika Watkis Porto, CEO of Pato Apparel. We put interpretations of our Jamaican phrases on clothing in English. I'm seeing your 10 fireside brand. Right, so this is our latest um, edition. We added this last year, launched it in October. And we have them, of course, in the regular sizes and the gift sizes. We want to increase our distribution and have the product available just about anywhere. We've been around for seven years and we certainly need to start seeing some level of growth. Growth in terms of our revenue, in terms of our reach. I'm putting myself out there for the purpose of my business. Uh, for me alone, maybe I would not do it, but because I believe so much in my business and I have a broad vision for it, I see it as a global brand that wherever you are in the world, you should be able to you know, wear a piece of hat to apparel because it is such a phenomenal brand. And this is part of a part of the hair care yes, system. Yes, it is. We actually use it along with our coloring. So first we lift some of the natural color from the hair, then we apply the coloring so we get a vibrant color. I am Samuel Manning. I'm a director in the company and... This is Kenisha Sterling, the chemist and quality controller. York MDRM and what we do here is that we manufacture and distribute hair care, nail, nail care and skin care products that we distribute all across Jamaica, all 14 parishes. A lot of hairdressers and cosmetologists and even the many of the women, they gravitate to our products because of the, the, the quality of our products and they get them at affordable prices. So all the bottling you do is by hand. How many people work in this factory? How many people do you employ? Well, approximately 10 persons. So we have five packaging ladies, we have three to four compounders, and we have a maintenance person. The products are, are, quite, are, quite, are, quite, are quite good, they're in high demand, and we believe that any investor that comes on board you know, we're we'll going to be able to see their, 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 their investment grow quite rapidly. We need to make at least one billion dollars US per year. If you look, Marcia, at this river, one side of the river, the rocks are really white and clean. Now, the reason for that is that the alkaline water coming from this side of the river keeps these rocks clean. Yes, so just imagine the inside of your body, what it could do for you. My name is Devon Williams of Lifespan. I am Nayana Williams, the general manager of Lifespan. We manufacture our own bottles now. Lifespan uh, is distributed island-wide. We have um, bottles in various sizes. Um, the 340 ml, the 500 ml. And this it is looks, not a picture it, it, it you're looking look, at, Marcia. It is here. It is here. This and, is and this land has, land has been prepared for the dream facility. The, its entire property should have factories on it that can produce water to go global. Lifespan is a bottling company that bottles naturally alkaline spring water. And we are the only naturally alkaline spring water in the Jamaica. Side of the hemisphere. And, to, and we do not allow anybody to no, we're not be in there today. <laughs> My name is Javed Nixon. I'm a director for Vein Centers of Jamaica. And I'm Hilary Brown Nixon. I am the medical director for Vein Centers of Jamaica. Uh, vein Centers is a two-year-old medical practice. We concentrate on vein procedures. Um, it was estimated that some 10% of any population would suffer from some kind of vein, vein disorder. I saw that there were certain services that they weren't being offered, so I went back to the States and did additional training so I could provide that service. Aspects um, that are tied to medical tourism as well that we can exploit. And we feel this is a great opportunity to uh, get a, a Jamaican-grown business um, that, has, that has been using global technology in a very strong way. Um, 
to expand and to, to, to be relevant beyond just Jamaica. We have strong ambitions for vein centers, so we knew that at some point in time we'd have to be talking to either financial institutions or other investors about growing the business. So it's something that um, from the outset we were personally very prepared for. Good morning and welcome. For those I haven't met, my name is Nadine Matthews. I lead strategy, marketing, and communications for the NCB Group. You've been chosen because of your vision, your passion, your business track record, and your overall presentation. So I commend you and I congratulate you for being here on what's the beginning of an exciting and value-added journey. You are embarking on a week-long boot camp to start. So we want to make sure that you have all the business fundamentals so that you can be confident and ready to pitch your businesses to private equity financiers. The second part of it, you will go through a series of challenges because that's the nature of life. And these challenges are designed to test your fortitude your commitment, your passion, as well as your business acumen. The final part of the program is about you getting the opportunity of a lifetime to pitch your businesses to a group of financiers, to get that equity investment that's going to take your businesses to the next level. Who is the best marketer and seller for their companies right now? You are, the business owners. If you can do that well, then you're training your team to do it as well. So remember I said if I stepped in the elevator and you only had 45 seconds or even a minute, you've got to say something that means something to me. Telling me about the whole range of cosmetics and products. No, it's what are you doing for me? And then by the way, these are the products that we do. We talk a lot about our products and ourselves. That's the first things we start with. No, if you want to get my attention, the elevator is going to stop on the next floor. You only have 45 seconds. Maybe get that out. With day one of the boot camp completed, the entrepreneurs are now ready for their first challenge, the elevator pitch. Welcome entrepreneurs to NCB Capital Quest. My name is Jean-Paul Menu, and I'll be your presenter. You will each be given 45 seconds to pitch your company to our business mogul. Once you enter the elevator, the clock will start. After all is done, you will be judged by a panel on how you did. Good luck to you all. For a business to grow, financing is very, very important. An entrepreneur needs to be able to pitch his or her business to a financier. A good elevator pitch should really focus principally on the audience. In this case, the audience is someone or, or an entity who, is going to who could potentially invest with you. Therefore, you always have to ask the question, what are their needs? And make sure within 45 seconds, you focus on their needs. My name is Rita Hilton, and my company is Carita Jamaica Limited. My name is Javit Nixon. I'm a director of Vein Centers of Jamaica. My name is Cassina Dunkley, and I'm from Southside Distributors. My name is Michael Chai from the Stationery Center. My name is Samuel Manning from MDRM International Limited. Hi, my name is Niana Williams with award-winning Lifespan Company Limited. I'm Henika Watkins Porto, CEO, Pato Apparel. As our entrepreneurs prepare for their pitches, they have no idea who the business mogul is. Hello, Mr. Peter. Peace to meet you. My name is Henika Watt CEO of Pato Apparel. We are about Jamaican messages that make the world smile. Merging language with fashion, we create authentic Jamaican lifestyle clothing to visitors to our island, as well as all persons with an affinity to brand Jamaica. We do this by adding exciting Pato phrases and associated English translation to our clothing. Excellent customer service, quality, integrity, and creativity are hallmarks of our brand. Our purpose, life transformation through inspiration. We are an award-winning company as well, a bold one of manufacturing from National Bakery in 2012. And that's about that. Thank you. 
Mm, I was a bit taken aback. I was surprised. I had no idea that I would be, you know, making that pitch to Mr. Leachin himself. Uh, tourists coming in, uh, they have a memento to take back. Uh, they have the patois and then the English transla translation. Uh, I, I guess that would be attractive to someone remembering their uh, experiences experience at Jamaica. So I think she would. Uh, she touched upon a good point there in terms of uh, its relevance to tourists. Uh, so overall, would I want a second interview? Uh, yes, I would want a second interview. Uh, we're uh, to just to explore uh, how the business is differentiated. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Michael Leachin. Yes. I'm Rita Hilton. Please meet you. And I'm the owner of Carita Jamaica Limited. My company ships fresh produce to markets in the diaspora, the US, Canada, and the UK. And we ship a wide range of uh, fresh Jamaican produce. Best quality we can find to satisfy our customers. And it ranges from yams to fruits to tubers. And we want to give satisfaction to our customers. So, you know, getting feedback, we want to now go into a line of Jamaican bush teas and frozen, ready-to-eat products, which the housewife that wants to taste the Caribbean will enjoy. So we want to give value to our customers. So that's what we are about. Thank you. I think I would have taken five deep breaths before I started and not been in such a hurry to get started. If you're in the commodity business, the most important factor will be your price. Because when people buy a yam, they're going to say, is this one cheaper than this one? Right? So if yours is more expensive, why should I buy this one? Unless it's, you see, in bold yam. I want you to try and get this down pat. We're at a moment's notice. If someone asks you, they see you, everybody's walking around with their brands on their shirts. If I ask you about Carito, Fireside, Patwa, 10 Fireside, Lifespan, you must be able to just have it flowing off of the tip of your tongue. If you're speaking within a 45 second time frame, uh, you have to five sense, bring out the five senses so people can hear you, they can see you, right? They can taste, they can feel it. So if that's not there, they're not gonna buy. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Samuel Manning from MDR International Limited. Don't you love it when you, you go out there and you, your hair, your nails, your skin look fabulous? And you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, wow. You have this feeling of confidence because you know that you're looking good. But we, our job is to make people look beautiful. We want them to have this wow effect and, and feel beautiful with that feeling of confidence that you get when you know that you're looking good. We manufacture dozens of cosmetics for the hair, the nails, and the skin on the War One Super brands. We distribute them to skin. 45 seconds. Next. What we have done differently would be to, to shorten the introduction and get quickly to some of the most salient points I'd like to me, I'd wanted to make. I heard nothing that would give me confidence that number one, if I put a dollar in, it's gonna be safe and sound. That's number one. I heard nothing that if I put a dollar in to that investment, it's gonna grow. I heard nothing uh, that if I put a dollar in, that my dollar will be around 10 years from now, plus growth. I heard a lot of fluff talk, but I didn't hear anything to, uh, that, that, that was directing to, directed to an investor. I'm Michael Chai, CEO of the Stationery Center, located in the Trade Center on Red Hills Road. Hello, Michael. I'm proud to be the part of an organization that is very, sorry, <coughs> that is very, um, that takes pride in offering its customers quality products at competitive prices along with a great customer service experience. This is something that I've been doing for over 25 years. Our line of products is very wide and diversified. And it is said 
that at the station centre, everything can be found under one roof, from a small pack of paper clip to a large paper shredder. You can consider us as your local company. I'm just coming up, getting back well from the Chick B virus. My daughter Lisanne will be taking over for the rest of the competition. And I just want to wish all the participants all the best and may the best man and woman win. Thank you. The, the, the presenter has to make sure that uh, he is engaging, engaging the audience. Uh, and the best way to do it is to five cents your, 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 your presentation. Uh, so there is nothing in it that really engaged me or inspired me to write a check. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Liana Williams with award-winning Lifespan Company Limited. Please meet you. Thank you. Um, we are manufacturers of the only naturally alkaline spring water in Jamaica. And what that does for you, it is it neutralizes the acidity in your body and causing your body to be free of diseases. And we are located in the Blue Mountains, in Buffalo Bay, Portland. And um, we are just, uh, we have the best water in Jamaica so far. Thank you. That's it? 45 seconds? No? You have more to go? I, I, think, I think I am just odd right now because I didn't know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start your book? I am not nervous. I was not really nervous. I was just shocked. <laughs> okay, so th th there are three criteria uh, that uh, I'm looking for uh, when I'm trying to develop a relationship with anyone. Uh, the first is there must be integrity. The second is there must be intelligence. And the third is there must be passion. Uh, so in, in terms of this presentation, uh, the, 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 the integrity I can't measure in 45 seconds. Intelligence, yes, I know that uh, an alkaline-based uh, water is better for you, right? So, so that has some ring, but I could have, so I, would, I was curious to hear more. The passion was not there. Good morning, Mr. Chen. Good morning, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm Javid Nixon from Vein Centers of Jamaica. We are a boutique medical practice that specializes in the treatments of vein um, conditions like um, venous disease and other insufficiencies. Um, we have been around for two years. We are very proud that in the first year we were profitable and we have continued to be profitable with gross margins of over 50%. Um, percent. And that's something that we are very, very proud of. Um, we have strong Caribbean ambitions. We want to expand to the rest of the Caribbean. And we feel that within the next two to three years, we'll be able to get revenues of over $10 million if we have adequate capital for that expansion. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it sometime if you have the time. Thank you. I, I was very surprised. Um, so, but um, I was also, I was also happy because um, it gave me, it, it gave me a sense of it's time to rise to the occasion. I would be curious for more information because what I heard, gross margins of forty percent. Uh, what I'm, uh, uh, revenue is coming in two years of 10 million US dollars. My curiosity would be, is there a growing market demand for the treatment of veins? That's, that would be my curiosity. I would suspect that as a population, as the population ages, then there would be a growing demand. Pleasant morning. Pleasant morning to you. My name is Cassina Dunkley. I'm from Southside Distributors. Pleased to meet you. Where we provide healthy, authentic Jamaican products manufactured with fresh produce from the Breadbasket Parish, that's St. Elizabeth. Our product range includes canned ackees, callaloo, jerk seasoning, jerk sauces, syrups, and even Solomon Gundy. We pride ourselves in pleasing our customers, both locally and internationally. And we're a multi-award winning company, so that shows that we're on a growth path. And at Southside Distributors, our taste and quality is just as good.
Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I was a little shocked, but I, I didn't have time, so I just composed myself and I just did what I had to do. The audience here are investors. I heard nothing that would, is relevant to an investor. So the great product description and a company description, but what's in it for me, the investor, was null and void or, or, or non-existent. The elevator pitch challenge is over. Now the entrepreneurs must face the judges. Stephen Gooden, CEO of NCB Capital Markets. Kari Robinson, CEO of Norbrook Capital Management. And our guest judge, Audrey Tugwell-Henry, senior GM and head of NCB's retail banking division. If you want to be in a position to accept capital at some point or you want to be in a position to partner with an investment company and grow, there are certain things and certain areas of your business that needs to be focused on, that needs to be developed and that will ultimately help you to become successful. I'm Henika Watkis Porto, CEO of Pato Apparel. Oh, nice. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, let's see your pitch. We are about Jamaican messages that make the world smile. Merging language with fashion, we create authentic... I was a bit, I uh, know, I don't know, nervous. Uh, yeah, I don't think I was my real self. I was a bit shy. I don't know. I don't understand that. That's not Henny Call. How did you feel when you saw the video? Um... I felt that I could have just ended the conversation by saying it was nice meeting you. That, that is what I would have done, you know, in a normal situation. But it was not a normal situation. And yeah, that's it. I think one of the positives was the fact that you articulated your business model well in terms of what you do and, and the market that you're going after. Um, it was a little bit unfortunate that you didn't speak a little bit to the value creation side. Um, you know, but, but it, was, it was a good first step. Um, so you are patented in 29? No, trademark in 20, trademark, 20. trademark. That would have been yeah, great. You're mm -hmm. valuing intellectual property. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. So that would be a, a good addition oh, to the yeah, pitch. Yeah, I mean, I guess next time I know I need to, um, yeah. One of the things that I think um, was missing here is that you weren't captivating an investor. You told us a lot about the business. Um, and I will say that you know we, we got the passion and the understanding and, 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 and our, our grasp of where the concept is, mm -hmm. but we didn't hear anything about the you know where you are, how you got to where you are, where you're trying to go, um, the scale of the business, the scope, and so on. And at the end of the day, that's what the investor is looking for, right? I mean, looking to try and figure out can I create value here, mm -hmm. and and then didn't walk away with that. Having no realize at the very last minute that you're pitching to Mr. Lee Chin, you would have had something prepared to, to change that. You would have shown that you were not prepared, you know? Um, so that's how it, why it came across that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that, I appreciate that. Um, but the truth is, I think that is one of the hallmarks of a great entrepreneur. So if you are able to walk in at the last minute and realize that the situation is not what you prepared for um, and are able to adapt and, and still shine in that scenario, mm -hmm. I think that would have even been better and, 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 and yeah, more outstanding. Um, so it is, it's tough, but business is tough, as, as you know. And so um, it's, the first, it's the first pitch. Um, keep in mind that at the end of the day, this is Capital Quest, and it's about you know, leveraging capital from investors to, to enhance your business. I think you have a great product. I think you explain you, you know, your, your passion and your drive and where you guys want to be very well. But at the end of the day, you know, we're not looking to be buyers of the product. We're looking to be buyers of your business and you and, and investing in you so that you can get to that next level. So um, that's, I guess, the, the takeaway from this. Yeah, when, when the door opens, and in, in your case it was literal, yeah, just find a way to, to step in and make yeah, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I know in my head that I need to be prepared for anything that comes my way, and and in a serious way, it's just how to 
okay so now you know who it is that you're dealing with you thought it was x but you realize it's y variables change i just need to know how to think on my feet um because that was that that was like a split uh, a split second kind of a thing that I needed to have just shifted my thinking and what I'd prepared to go into a different zone and the truth is within a few seconds it was difficult for me to do that good afternoon judges good afternoon, good afternoon. my name is Rita Hilton and I'm the owner of Carita Jamaica Limited huh? let's see your pitch put on my glasses <laughs> <laughs> My company ships fresh produce to markets in the diaspora. I might have misunderstood the objective of this interview, um, which was to really make my business attractive to investors. I was um, on the line where I gave the account of the business as well as what value I was providing to the customers and where my product would be available in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. It's interesting awesome. to watch yourself perform, right? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> A couple of things. I think that, you know, when, when we see the, the pitch, um, as investors, what we want to know is, you know, what about this business is attractive? What about this business would make for a good investment for us? And one of the things that, you know, is clear is that you're passionate about the business. Um, but what I didn't get is where does investment fit in? So even though you've described what you do and, and, and you know, gave us a sense of where you'd like to take the business and, and so on, we didn't understand, you know, what the investment would be for, um, you know, the scope of the investment. I mean, just looking at the, the fact sheet, I mean, your, 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 your business is, it has a relatively high margin, right? Um, when you look at, you know, commodity-based um, businesses, they tend to have lower margins, so mm -hmm. clearly there's something different about your business, about the products that you offer. And I think you probably missed an opportunity to articulate that in the pitch. Mm -hmm. But the margins are good, and you know, by, by speaking to the margins, um, you'd have built credibility about the business mm -hmm. from early. I think one way to overcome the issue that you're kind of in a commodity business would be to articulate the point that you're more in high quality, um, niche yes. and um, I think that would have helped and also you've been around a long time and you've had quite a bit of success so you could have made that point I think from an investor's perspective they want to understand you know your history your track record and, and so they can make some kind of a projection as to the potential for where your business could go I thank you for your input all of you I highlighted the fact going into the bush teas, which will give us even better margins, yeah. Yeah. and that going into the frozen line yeah. will add value yeah. to, the, to yeah. everybody's. Yeah. So I was giving value in that sense, yeah. rather than, you know, uh, trying. At the end of the day, this is about an investment. Um, it's an opportunity for you to grow as an entrepreneur yes. and learn as an entrepreneur. Yes. But from our side, yes. it's us looking at making an investment in your business and partnering with you to help you to, to reach that goal. Yes. Um, yes, the judges were very encouraging and uh, they liked the business uh, model and we hope that we can align it more with the investors. It looks like Shik V has taken away two of our, our contestants. One didn't make it and the other, um, I guess he made the pitch but and we'll get to watch that but um, he couldn't make the, the panel so can we, can we see that? Hello Michael. I'm proud to be the part of an organization. That is very sorry. <coughs> I feel I feel sorry for him. Somebody to pitch uh, at a cure for trick D. <laughs> <laughs> I think the challenge I was having is the fact that after like ten seconds in forty five seconds he never said what his business was. Yeah. So even yeah. though he wasn't feeling well, maybe that was a part of it. Yeah. Um, I didn't think he used the time well. Yeah. You know, he um, it, it took him a while to, to get going. Yeah. Agreed. It, it, it's interesting because for a 25-year-old company, you hardly see a company like that looking for venture capital. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would have been important for him to explain where the growth elements are coming from. Because right. it seems like it's a pretty stable mm -hmm. company you know, at a late stage in its life cycle. Right. But maybe they have some new technology or they have some new products or a new distribution methodology. Mm -hmm. But it would have been good to, for us to understand what's different about your business after 25 years that would make for a good growth investment. Yeah. It's hard to judge because you don't know who we saw there, given, given the ailment. Um, but it's his first, so we'll see where he goes from here. Pitching is about selling 
your value proposition or your product value proposition uh, to all the stakeholders. And as such, uh, knowing how to engage the stakeholders is very important. Good afternoon. Pleasant afternoon. My name is Cassina Duncan and this is Denise Farmer and we're representing Southside Distributors. Let's take a look at your pitch. Our product range includes canned ackies, callaloo, jerk seasoning, jerk sauces. I think I did well. There's always room for improvement. I have realized some, some areas where I can improve. You know, as an investor, we want to see who you are. We want to see that authenticity. Okay. Um, you know, so if I was to catch you inside the office or in the, in the, in the plant or, you know, um, we're talking to one of the distributors, who are we investing in? And that's not per that, that person, not the person that was there. That person there was a prepared, choreographed mm -hmm. presenter. Um, I think a little bit more of the business person needs to come out because yeah. people, they invest for value, but also the person behind the business is an important part of the decision making. They have to have the confidence that you can do what you say you're going to do and that it's, it is more than a pitch. Mm -hmm. So it has depth and they can see behind the business because part of it is understanding who is this potential partner. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a nice product. You did appeal to my taste buds. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, just have one Which, fundamental principle yes. in mind. You're, you're trying to get someone interested in investing in your yes. business. So even if you're telling them about the product, yes. you have to tell them about, about the value that the product can create. Yes because people want to understand value creation. And, and view, view that 45 seconds as a potentially a life-changing opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're learning a lot and it's a, it's a learning process. So I appreciate it because we're learning what to do and when to do it. Yes, I think that's it's it. It's a learning experience. I'm Nayana Williams with Lifespan and this is Devon Williams from Lifespan Company Limited. We produce the only naturally alkaline spring water in Jamaica. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I wish I had included um, more, more benefits of, uh, of Lifespan and um, what, what, um, what Lifespan is doing currently in Jamaica and where we are globally. That's it, 45 seconds. No, you have more to go. I, I, think, I think I am just on right now because I didn't know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start over? That one, it was the first year I've seen that? Uh, yeah, but that was like 15 seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. And said nothing. <laughs> 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 I, I know. You know, it's not used to, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's there. Yeah, that is understandable. Um, but you know, as as investors, yeah, we are looking for certain things to come out, you know, very early. And one of those things is that you sell a product. Right. And I, you know, when I watch that, I'm thinking, okay, what if we were to get you in front of the CEO of Walmart, and you have a huge opportunity to expand your business? Are you going to have 45 seconds to wow them and 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 and, and sell lifespan? Or are you going to pause and you know? Um, so. It's, it's, you know, it is a challenging time, but as investors, we want to know how you deal with challenges. Um, so it's, it's a learning lesson. I mean, this is water with a difference. <laughs> you know, many people are, you know, battling water these days, but, you know, as you rightfully said in your, in your pitch, uh, you are the only uh, bottler. That's, mm -hmm. that's battling, what was it? Naturally alkaline. Naturally alkaline, yes. And, yeah. and, and that's, that's, that's being different. Um, so it's really to, to sell that. You already have a history, you have a track record, it would have been good to kind of share that, um, mm. to build some credibility. I, you know, 45 seconds, you couldn't tell a lot, but I, I need to practice that part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the preparation is key. You know, you have a great product. Think of the three things that would make someone want to invest in your business and just get to the point. I mean, for now it was a missed opportunity, but I'm sure you can recover because you have a great product. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. Great, great start, though. We do have a little more homework to do. And um, yes, we do have the facts right, and we do have the product and so on, but we need to be, 
more practice to sell this product. So next time we'll be prepared to tell the investor, listen, we want your money to do this because this is what you'll be getting. Good afternoon. Hi. Right. Samuel Manning, and this is Kenesha Story from MDR International Limited. Yeah. Welcome. Let's let's see your pitch. Don't you love it when you you go out there and you, your hair, your nails, your skin look fabulous? It's correct for one to to to, to say that uh, here is an opportunity. You meet my Mr. Mr. Leach in in the in the elevator, and uh, and that, that's understandable. But when you when you know you have a few seconds, I might mean, have seconds just to, to 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 speak to someone who you have been looking at all this time and seeing him and and um, and probably aspiring to be someone like him, uh, you know it's a different thing altogether. I found it was somewhat, um, you know, somewhat. Uh, I was taken aback. We see the disappointment when <laughs> the 45 seconds was up. <laughs> 45 seconds. <laughs> you definitely run out of time. time. Yeah. Would have been a, a good start to a five minute pitch. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you know, given that it's 45 seconds, you, know, you really need to get to the point. Um, you know, speak to what is in it for the investor, speak mm -hmm. to the value proposition, you know, with regards to your, your, your products. I see you were trying to build on the, the value proposition, but 45 seconds mm -hmm. wasn't enough for you. It was a lot more of a story, um, mm -hmm. and you need to know your audience. You, you, you talk to an investor, you get one chance to make a first impression, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, someone needs to walk away mm -hmm. with wanting to talk to you again about, about um, an investment, because that's what you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking for. But I do have to ask, though, did you ask Mr. Leachin if he likes when his hair and his nails look good? <laughs> That was funny. That, that, that was an interesting one. That was an interesting start. Going forward, it's so important for us to, to, to plan. In anything that you do, it's very important for you to, to, to even think about possibilities, what possibilities may, may face you, what risk may be involved. And, and after the plan for those risks and plan for those aversions, plan for those uh, changes that may, may, may take place you know, as much as possible. And so it's, it's important to be prepared for, for anything. I'm Javed Nixon from Bain Centers of Jamaica. All right, let's see your pitch. We are very proud that in the first year we were profitable and we have continued to be profitable with gross margins of over 50%. Um, percent. And that's something that we are very, very proud of. Um, I stuck to, to some key areas that uh, I think every investor would want to know about the business. I talked about our gross margins. I talked about um, how we have been able to grow and uh, reference some of our, our, our profit target, targets. I also did some amount of projecting to see you know, where we want, where we, our intention for, for the growth of the business. And I think I ended with the asks, which is very important. And I think a lot of times we pitch, but we don't end with asking for a meeting or a follow-up or um, can I contact you, may I have a business card, etc. I'd love to talk to you about it sometime, if you have the time. Well, I'd, I'd definitely yeah. like to, to hear more. I yeah. uh, really liked your, 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 your pitch, your, your established credibility from early. You spoke about, um, you know, having started two years ago. In the first year, you were profitable. And at the end of the second year, you had gross margins north of 50%. Mm -hmm. um, that's unique. It's not many entrepreneurs that can boast that level of success. Mm -hmm. And you, you went further to, to, to give your, the potential investor insights into what you can expect. Mm -hmm. They can expect um, by you expanding um, regionally. So I, I think the, the pitch was, was, was good. Thank you. you were on point. If Aaron, an investor had want to hear from you again, I'd want more details. You touched on all the salient points. You were obviously very well prepared, including the suit. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and I really would have talked to you again and asked for your card or something. So congrats, it was a very good round for you. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing for me is that you know your audience because it's more important to an investor. Like we know we can find out yes. if, who, who, who the, the doctors are but you at least got us in by saying a little bit about the margins and the scope of the business and the Caribbean aspirations and so on. So, I good job. I the US the 10 minutes. I did, for a second there, I was like, really? <laughs> but, um, good job though, really, really good job.
Well, I'm very happy how it turned out. I had very strong feedback um, from the judges. They thought I, I hit the points that were supposed to be hit um, in an investor pitch. Um, and I'm ecstatic. Um, they, they, they really want to, to make a strong representation of a self-made company and I think um, the, the feeling of the judges was that um, in, in this case I, I did that. Well, the, uh, the days come to an end um, and I you know, want to say that you guys generally did a, a really good job. Um, as, as judges we're extremely excited about this journey that we're about to embark on with you. Everybody gave us a chance to learn a little bit more about your business, learn a little bit more about the products that you serve. Um, but you know, one thing that we wanted to reiterate that this is the Capital Quest. And at the end of the day, what you're looking for and the reason why you're here and you spent the time to, to, to mm -hmm. um, present yourselves is that you're looking for capital and potentially even strategic you know, um, support to grow your business. You all have great businesses, you all are positioned you know, for growth and you know, unlocking that will take um, a, cap some, a capital investment and that's why we're here. So as you go along this journey and you go along the challenges, um, keep in mind that at the end of the day, that's what you're here for and that's what you're looking for. Um, and you need to prove to the investment committee per se that you are worthy of investing in and that together we'll create something bigger and, and generate significant value. So congrats and go on strong on your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the next episode of MCB Capital Quest. Welcome to the second episode of Capital Quest. Sales and strategy. Please help me to welcome Mrs. Thalia Lin, founder and chief executive officer for Island Grill. Do you have any of the numbers? What strategies have you used so far to drive sales? Your skills in there will shine if you get it right. Welcome to the marketing, sales and strategy round. Today, one team will be declared the winner and one person will be eliminated. Join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using hashtag NCBCapQuest.